Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we will start the parsing series for BOD. And as you can see, I am actually starting off with the third boss in the raid, which is Jade Fire Masters. So for the first two bosses, Grong and Champions, I have a few things that I want to try out in raid tomorrow. And if everything goes according to plan, I'll have those two bosses up as well later this week. But before we start the footage here, uh, let's take a quick look at the Azurite traits that I was running. I was running double Fester Might, one Harrowing Decay, one Magus, and then one Treacherous Covenant. I have since changed my gear to run triple Fester Might, double Treacherous Covenant, and one Magus, which is technically the best you can get out of the raid. Uh, this footage was recorded two weeks uh, prior to recording this video, so and it was a rank one. Um, it currently is, I believe, a rank eight. So that's not too bad for two weeks later, it's still still in the top 10. As far as talents go, you can see them in the top left hand side of the corner. I am running Unholy Frenzy, just default Unholy build with Epidemic. So Epidemic on this fight is pretty useful because there are a few points where you can cleave uh, three to four targets. And outside of that, you can cleave two targets entirely um, throughout the entire fight, except for maybe the last 10 seconds or so. Um, as far as trinkets go, I was running one PvP trinket that procs strength, and then the Mechator trinket. And over here, I still had a 405 eye level, and I'm currently running a 415 eye level one. So jumping into the fight, we'll start the footage here. There's basically two points in this fight where you can lust. You can either lust on pull, or you can lust after the second intermission. If you lust on pull, then you obviously want to army on pull. If you're going to be using Lust in the second intermission, or after the second intermission, then you want to save army for that. Um, as soon as you go into the fight here, you want to use just your default opener, with or without army depending on Lust. And then you want to drop your Death and Decay as soon as possible, because pretty shortly into the fight, as you can see here at the 20 second marker, they simply jump away. And if you drop your Death and Decay too late, then they're just going to simply jump out of it. And you also want to make sure that you have your second death and decay up for when the orbs spawn. I'm actually going to pause the video here for a second, because this part of the fight is crucial to getting a good rank. Knowing how to do this multi-sided strike is very important, because each stack you do correctly will give you a damage buff. So if you mess up stacks, you're just losing out on free damage essentially. Uh, one thing that I can recommend doing is, if you're struggling with this, is hiding your UI. I have my keybound to hide my UI set to a pretty convenient key uh, because there are quite a few fights where it's beneficial. But if you're struggling with this, you can simply hide your UI as soon as you get ported up and that's going to make it a lot easier. Now, as far as the images go, there's two ways of telling which one you have to face. First is the order that they actually appear in. And the second way is that the image that is going to be charging you will actually glow right before it does so. I'm going to resume the footage here. As you can see, you just do them correctly, come down, and this is where the orbs are going to be spawning pretty shortly. Um, so here you just want to bank up some runic power and make sure to stay uh, away from using your death and decay as soon as you come down, because you want to move over to the orb, then drop your death and decay so you can be cleaving the boss and the orb at the same time. Now here I actually refresh my outbreak on the boss, even though there's about 5 or 6 seconds left on it, just to get that dot on the boss or on the orb as well. Uh, with Dark Transformation, it was up for quite a few seconds there, but I felt that it was better to just use globals into pumping damage than use Dark Transformation as I'm running over, uh, because I'm not going to have that short of a Dark Transformation cooldown on this fight, because I'm using most of my runic power on Epidemics. I'll pause again here. And as you can see here, we have the two spirits come out, and on Mythic, these are a great way of boosting your damage a little bit. If you save up some runic power for when the spirits come out, then make sure that they are dotted up. As soon as they leap into melee or get gripped into melee, you want to just spam out those epidemics. And if these spirits are up for quite a little, quite a while, you can actually cleave four targets or even five if you move over to the next orb with the other boss. But usually you're only going to get about three target cleave out of this. So one thing that I didn't do so hot on this fight is using my AMS correctly. This point in the fight right here is a great spot to use your AMS because you're taking constant ticking damage. Especially if you're running Spell Eater, you're going to be getting quite a bit of runic power from that AMS. So as you can see, I had the Death Coil proc up for quite a while and I didn't use it just because we had four targets stacked 
So getting that epidemic damage was a lot more beneficial, even though I am running one Harrowing Decay. Um, so we finish off the multi-sided strike. And as you can see my Unholy Frenzy, I used it before the strike. Now you might be thinking that it might be beneficial to save it until after the strike and then get the damage buff from the, the buff and then using your cooldowns so everything you sync up together and you just pop off. However, because of where we lost on this fight, I actually found it better to just use it prior to make sure I have it up for the lust. So I'll actually play here. Um, now the bosses will be transitioning here very shortly. And you want to make sure you have this lock gate set up and then just use that advance to get to the wall as quickly as possible. You can use Wraith Walk on this fight, but I haven't found it super useful. Um, so I just chose to use Spell Eater. Now I actually went over to the wrong barrier first. We typically break the one on the right side first. Um, but I actually ended up going to the one to the wrong one. But as these barriers get broken and they become vulnerable, you want to dot all of them up. And then drop your death and decay as soon as the one next to the one you're hitting is vulnerable, so you can cleave onto them. And here you can see that the barrier was at about 10% HP, and my dot, my outbreak, or my vernal plague was already running out. I chose not to refresh it because that's just using a global and using a rune for getting about two to three seconds of dot damage. So this is where you get another multi-sided strike. Right after th this multi-sided strike is where you are going to be using all of your cooldowns. So if you look at all of my cooldowns right now, my Army of the Dead is obviously up, my Unholy Frenzy is up, my Apocalypse is about to come off cooldown, my Dark Transformation is about to come off cooldown, and my Trinket is about to come off cooldown. So I have everything, as well as Berserking. So I have a full sync up of damaging abilities coming right after this multi-sided strike. So we do this, hopefully correctly, um, face all of the images, then you get ported down, right here. I pop my army as soon as we get down, I use my second potion, um, you know, use all of my cooldowns and just go ham on this boss. So my pet was actually hitting the wrong target there, one thing I could have done better is to make sure I command my pet to be on this closer boss um, as soon as we transitioned, but then as soon as every the other boss comes over and these um, little spirits come into the melee as well. You just want to cleave everything down, drop your death and decay, use your epidemics, and just pump as much damage as possible. Now, as you can see here, I'm doing quite a bit of damage, but we have two DPS dead. So that means this last phase is going to last a little longer than we would ideally want to. Um, so the goal here is to kill Mestra as soon as possible, but we have two DPS dead. And if you look at the timers right now, there's a multi-sided strike in 14 seconds, as you can see down here. If we get the multi-sided strike, we're going to get a pretty nice damage boost, uh, because the second boss is still at pretty high HP since we are down 2 DPS. If the second boss was, let's say, at 10% HP or 15% HP, it, was, it would probably be better to just kill Mestra and then finish off the boss because the time you actually spend in the air doing the multi-sided strike would just be a wasted amount of time that you could be spending DPSing. But since the second boss is still pretty high HP, um, I swap to it, and as you can see, Mestra's HP essentially stops, um, looks like everyone basically swapped off of her, and we do this multi-sided strike. And the, the other boss is still at about 20% HP, so I'm going to get maybe 20 seconds of damage, so... Out of the 30 seconds that the, the buff lasts, that's not that ba bad of a deal. And my Unholy Frenzy actually comes back up here, and I pop it, but since everyone has this buff, the boss is just going to melt, and it's actually going to die right there, which was 22 seconds into the buff. So that wasn't bad. In that situation, it was more beneficial to hold off on killing Mestra, uh, in a different situation, it might have been actually better to kill her and then just finish the other boss without having to deal with extra strikes. But yeah, that's how you do the most damage on this fight, and there's not that many gimmicks on this fight. It's pretty straightforward. It's all about using your cooldowns correctly. Now, a few things that I could have done better is, first of all, my pet management, and second of all is my AMS usage. I didn't use AMS well enough uh, to get extra runic power, there are a few points in the fight where you can AMS for extra runic power, which is quite beneficial. And I just didn't really do it on this fight. Um, and that was definitely a misplay because 
if you get two to three more epidemics um, out of, throughout the fight, that's right there is like 50 to 60k damage. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any questions about Unholy DK or this fight in particular, please let me know in the comment section below. And I will have an updated Unholy guide come out here pretty soon, but in the meantime if you want to check out how to play with the BOD trinkets or the Azerite trace that most people are running, make sure to check out my written guide which is pinned in my Discord.